Guess what? It's time again for the May Wild West Show, the podcast where we tell the hedonistic adventures of myself, my husband, Mr. West, and my friends in the modern American Wild West. Yeah, the Rocky Mountain region, where it's usually so damn cold that we've got nothing better to do than fuck from October until March. This is the show where we tell the stories of our sometimes reckless, usually sexy, probably awkward, and always thrilling lives. My name is Mae Wild West, and I'm a trophy wife, an embarrassing mom, the loudest person pretty much anywhere I go, and a member of a super secret naughty club. Yep, my husband and I swing, sometimes hot wife, but mostly just enjoy spending time with our friends and having kinky sex. My entire life, I've tended to get myself into some amazing adventures and sticky situations, Partially because of my curiosity that gets me in trouble, and partially because my motto is, I'll try anything once for science. But remember, if you're going to follow the scientific method, you got to try it at least three times. The stories we share will be spicy, sexy, and completely inappropriate for kids. Think sex, drugs, rock and roll, and a load of laundry. As always, this podcast is intended for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered professional or even good advice. Now, let's full send into today's episode. Guess what we did? We played naked in a huge pile of foam bubbles in semi-public. So today I have my wonderful husband, Mr. West, back with me today to do another episode about couple troubles, except for the, this time around, we're the troubled couple, right? Tr- troubled. No, I'm not troubled. I am trouble. Yes. Yeah. Also troubling. Just depends on your level of comfort. <laughs> All right. That was the most awkward introduction I've ever had in my life. Probably. You get your shit together, woman. I got my shit together. I even have notes. You gave them to me. I know. I gave you the note. So you know what we're talking about. What implied that I fucking read them? When was the last time you know a man to read any instructions? Well, at the very least, you can't be mad when you when we find when we end up someplace and you're like, "Well, how the hell did we get here?" And I'll tell you, "Well, you should have read the notes." Maybe. 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 Anyways. Okay, so in our last episode, and we talked about how we've had some super awkward couple interactions, and this time around, we're going to talk about how we are the super awkward couple a good portion of the time and cause the super awkward interactions. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that's the case most of the time. <laughs> right. Like, you're like, oh, my God, what's wrong with those people? And they are like, oh, my God, what is wrong with those people? Facts. All right. So I figure the most or at least one of the most awkward stories that we have would be the time that we went to the Scarlet Ranch in Colorado. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I, I, we were, I really felt out of place. We had never been to an actual club, an adult club, something like this ever before. But we're also not like go to club type people. Didn't we? Hadn't we already been to the? Hadn't we already been to the uh, Montchelet? Yeah, but that's not the same. That's not well, even... We'd been to an adult club though, but we just had yeah. had one like this. Not like one where they have a DJ and dancing and evidently we're eating fucking seventy five dollar plates, you know, dinner plates. Naked people wandering around. Okay, so it wasn't quite that way. I mean, they kept most of the naked people out of the, the dining room. And there were rules. I had to be, like, down there. It was different. Outside to be naked. Uh, yeah, but it was it, it was different. Yeah, no. But, but I mean, we were not really, like, go out clubbing, like, with the DJ and the dance floor. And there aren't actually, like, clubs where we're from. Nobody wants to watch us dance. Okay, we'll use that too. <laughs> if I go walk and chew gum at the same time, it would be a miracle. Good thing you suck dick good. Right. That's, that's, it's so you know, <laughs> all about balance in your life, you know, triple oh, wow. eight, excellent in the sack. 
So we go and I am already, before we even leave home, in a tizzy about what it is I'm going to wear. Because, well, I don't know what you're supposed to wear. And then, you know, I'm pretty positive you're supposed to wear high heels. And the idea of wearing high heels in public actually is terrifying. I could find it humorous if it wouldn't be so humiliating. I'm klutzy. That's what the problem is, is I'm just a klutz. So I already was like completely nervous and I had absolutely no idea. And if I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing and how things are supposed to be done, then I just, it freaks me out. I think now on when you're freaked out, just revert to crisis management rule number one. What's that? Put a penis in your mouth. Oh, there you go. There's 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 crisis management rule number one. Put a penis in your mouth. When you're freaking out, just suck dick. Yep. It'll fix it all. Jesus. <laughs> I, well, I mean, like, what I would, would be feeling awkward and freaked out about would definitely change. Get your mind off of it. Yeah, don't get my mind off of it. So we go, and there's, it, and it's a really nice place. It's a really, really nice place, and it's the last oh, foam yeah. party of the year. That's why we went. <laughs> foam party's the whole reason. Which is what really threw me off for the clothing situation, because it was like cool enough out that it wasn't like you were going to show up in your like your swimsuit, but then you're like, well, okay, but you're supposed to dress nice, but then you're supposed to be naked. You, there's foam, and I was it was blew my mind beyond my abilities and downstairs is all the play areas and you're not supposed to be naked above downstairs <laughs> you're not supposed to be outside. Naked upstairs but then you can be naked outside and they get a little more lax about the loot rules about who can be naked when after a later at night i think i don't know if they're supposed to or not but they seem to Just so observation yeah Downstairs, there's the play areas. They've got these individual rooms that have curtains across them that you can either open or close to let people watch you play or not watch you play. Or, well, I mean, I guess you can see through them. And there is a, the whole inner space of this room is with just people standing there waiting for their turn to play in one of these, like, eight rooms. Yeah. I, it's. I'll be honest with you, that was really just fucking awkward. That was just weird for me. I mean, it's like but I don't I don't know how to describe that one. It's like it's like he, he, there is there is a line of people there that are that are waiting to take their turn to use one of those cabana rooms. That's what they were like. They were like a cabana room. I mean, it's like going to it's like going to the, you know, to the amusement park and waiting to get on the ride. It it did feel a little like going to the amusement park and waiting to get on the ride. <laughs> and then the shower, like changing room, bathroom situation is fantastic. Oh, that was cool as shit. There were some people out there playing some naked Jenga. I had no idea what the whole purpose of it was. I mean, like, now granted, I might have been a little fucked up, but I, we had sex in the shower, I think. We did. It was a lot of fun. It was all glass. Everybody can watch. I, you know, I kind of like get off on the watching thing. And it was super Good warm. Time. So it wasn't like you were like in there trying to like have sex in the shower and not freeze your ass off. Right, which is right. You know, I got to do my favorite shower blow jobs. Well, shower blow job. Uh, there was only one dick that it got got blown in that shower at that time. By you, anyways. At least by me, yeah. And then we there with was the, the awkwardness that we never ended up with anybody that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just so nervous. Yeah. And so out of our element that everything just, I think we just spent most of the night staring at people and things like, what the, what, oh, holy. What the fuck are we doing? What the what fuck are we, they doing? I mean, never sat still long enough anywhere to like really. You know, and that, and that's the next thing is just I start to question the whole time relative thing because, I mean, like we had taken some LSD and, and some edibles, I think, and. So, I mean, like, time might have been a relative thing. Maybe we moved it's really fast. Maybe we moved really slow. Voice. But that's not what I would say. The the I'm sorry. The part and he doesn't, part want, was... he doesn't want to drop some tabs and go, go play in some foam. 
Uh, we did. That was what we wanted to do. And we did do that. And we had a really good time. And we actually Where? met some really nice people in the phone. Did the owner. Yeah. And they were really super cool. And in, in, in the phone. Yeah. yeah in the phone. Don't ever wipe your eye, your face once the foam starts. Like you get it on don't your hand. Don't touch your face. Do not touch your face. You are Whatever fun. you do. That's- yeah. Good advice. You go to a phone party like that. It's a g- real good time. Just. Just don't touch your fucking face. It was uh, it was a great place. Great people. Um, really nice people. Really, at the end of the day, I mean, nothing. The reason why we were so awkward and the whole thing was so awkward is because we hadn't come to that realization that we came to where you have to introduce yourself to people. Yeah, we were. St- this goes back to you know we we can we can roll back to the whole. It's a completely different scene where you're encouraged to interact with people and be nosy most of the time. Whereas in real life, that's especially, well, I don't, I mean, I'm guessing it's the same everywhere, but you stay the fuck out of other people's business. They want you in their business. That's why they're there. And you're just being the awkward people in the corner when you're not going and getting in people's business. Now, not everybody, lots of people go to clubs. Or go <laughs> not have people touch their business, but right. I mean, like I said, there's they're both there. Business without being asked. Uh, let's do you know. I kind of comes back to just use some common sense, you know, um, cues. You know, look at look at things and go, yeah, they're into like other people or not. But <laughs> context clues. We were the problem. Like, I think that we would have had a lot more fun the, that first time if we hadn't been in our own way. We had no idea what the hell we were doing. We maybe probably could have just not had so high of expectations. That's one of the problems I always have is I have way too high of expectations. And then you want to try and make something happen. And then you get, like, stuck in your head. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't think. Like, whatever. I think it just a lot of it had to do with this is the inexperienced and not, you know, and not having any clue what you're doing. And like everything else we do, we jump in to it and then go, fuck. Forgot our water wings? Yeah. We'll just figure this out as we go. You know, that's a problem for another hour. (laughs) Right. One of the things that we figured out from going was that. It, first of all, it would be a good place, I think, to go with other couples or to go with other people that you already knew because a lot of the people who go there seem like the people who go every weekend or a couple times a month because it's in such a highly populated, you know, swinger area. I mean, if you're real social people and good at, you know, talking and, you know, and meeting people and talking and meeting and pretty much everything that we're not, then you'll probably, you'd probably do great at the ranch. The ranch would be perfect for you. But we also realize that it, it, it's one of those things that makes you, helps you realize and I guess grow in your relationship even is, is realizing what is actually your thing and what is not your thing. And sometimes trying things and finding out they aren't your thing helps you figure out what is your thing. You got to figure out what makes you happy. So I guess one of the things that we did, I know of, that I can think of that we did at Scarlet Ranch that we did totally wrong is they have a teepee, (laughs) right? And it's where everybody goes out to smoke weed is basically what it is. But it's got a fire pit inside and these uh, sort of like futani bench couch things around the outside. And it's super comfortable. And no joke, we sat there. And I mean, like, I think we spoke several times when, when we were there. And uh, sat there next to each other, kind of. I think we looked like we were in middle school. You know how, like, dance. Yeah, like hanging out on the wall against the dance at the dance. That's pretty. I think that's a pretty accurate fucking description of that. To be honest with you, not that they were standoffish. I mean, they would. No, I didn't do that. I think I we were it, just super awkward. It was on us. Like we needed to make some sort of. Uh, heck, I think I spent half the night looking at my shoes. Right. It was. Yeah, so it happened. It was, it was, it was, it was awkward. When then you get start getting your head, and you start thinking, well, okay, well, then those people don't want to talk to me, probably, you know, like. Or it could have been the LSD. Or it could have been the LSD. It could have been. <laughs> <laughs> could you that they didn't like, want to talk to you? 
No, no, it's poor. We just have poor social skills. So we go through this whole thing. We do this, and we ended up having sex in the big sex room, too. There was like a, uh, what was that, St. Andrew's Cross, and some lady was getting... Blogged. Is that which one it was? I didn't know what yep. type smacker doohickey she was getting used on her. And we ended up having sex there, too. Yeah, yeah, we did. Out of everybody, which was a little bit awkward to start with. Yeah, I think that's pretty awkward if you've never really done it to start with. Basically, probably as normal as it would could ever possibly hope to be. Right. But I mean, I, it's not like I didn't get there. And I tell you what, <laughs> so who's, uh, that place has got the cleaning staff of like Cinderella and her mice. Like, like people have sex, they're out there with their wipes. Cleaning. They got bleach wipes and they got... You know, towels everywhere. That place got hygiene down to a science. Right. No, I think we had a good time. I mean, don't you think you had a good time? You had a good time. I mean, like, I think we always have a good time. Well, that is true. We're always a good time. <laughs> it just, just generally whether or not the, the good time outweighed the awkwardness. And I mean, it was a good time, but yeah, I think if I went back, it would, I would, if I wanted to go back, it would definitely be with some friends just because then that way you wouldn't feel so alone but maybe we've progressed far enough into this that we could go back and make friends i doubt it but kind of brings me to what i think is probably one of the second most awkward situations we've ever gotten ourselves into i better read the notes shit a friend of ours told us that we're now no longer take allowed to take drugs from strangers oh yeah so yeah that's i know that sounds you know, kind of odd, but yeah, no, it's a good tip. Well, you know, strangers. <laughs> you can do drugs with them. Are they strangers? These ones should have been. They should so, have been. We should have been way smarter. So we go to the Scarlet Ranch and we're like, okay, well, we fucked that one up because we acted like awkward dweebs and couldn't talk to anybody. And yeah, that was a mess. So we decide that we are going to do better next time. So we get a you know, improve, improve. We're gonna we're, we're gonna start interacting with people, going and up and talking to them. We did. We therapied. We therapied ourselves on this, and we decided we would figured out the we'd figured it out. So we get ourselves a room at the Von Chalet. It could be a way good time, or it could be yeah, or it could be a complete bust. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be like between <laughs> between a way good time and a complete bust, right? Okay, so we decide we're going to get a room and we are going to have a good time because we are going to be social. We're going to be social butterflies. So we get there. We go to go get in the hot or in the pool, in the hot tub, and we get in the the pool first, right? And we're we're floating around, scoping it out, checking it out. You know where we where we want to be social. Mostly, probably psyching ourselves up to be social. More than that. I think yeah, the latter is probably more correct. We get in the pool and we're floating around trying to psych ourselves up to go be social with somebody. And Any, anybody that we could find remotely that we thought might be interested in us. <laughs> right. Because you're always worried that, that you're not going to be good enough for people. <laughs> exactly. That's that's a whole other subject. I even put that on my list of episode ideas for later. For uh, the uh, not. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, onward. Onward. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so we decided to get in the one hot tub and we go up there and we say, hi, excuse us. And like introduce ourselves and we're like, do you mind if we join you? And they're all like, of course not. <sighs> and right. there is this one couple who we didn't realize was not with the rest of the group. And they seem pretty cool. They seem really nice. Yeah, really nice couple. I mean, like, fairly normal. There was this group. Normal in this lifestyle? Is it such a thing? I don't think they even use the word normal anymore. No, probably not. So there was, and then there was this group of, was it three couples? Let me see. We had, the, we had, we had Ohio. We had Ohio and his wife. And then there was. Then we had engineer and the, we had the engineer and her boy toy. <laughs> And then we had, I think they were a connected couple. Too. He was connected. Yeah. Really connected. And then we had the foreign couple, 
that I I am not entirely I I that one I don't know man. <laughs> then we had the dude sitting on the edge of the hot tub jerking off in my ear randomly. Okay. And then, and we had um uh, and then later another couple so yeah so i mean like, it was it was it looked, it looked it was looking to be like it could be an interesting time i mean like so we we dove in head first yeah and they were interesting broke our fucking necks they were interesting and but we didn't understand what was going on was the reason why they were interesting because we were too well, worried about trying to fit in and be normal and not be awkward. So, so she's we're talking and and the 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 engineer lady gave me some funny looks and I, I'm like I'm, they're kind of and they're all kind of like super touching each other like a lot, which is normal. I mean, people with the lifestyle they're very very touchy, but this like included like sticking fingers in each other's mouths and. And that was a little much, but we're like, who are we to judge? We do some weird shit. We're kinky too, so let's, you know, okay, let's not be judgy here. We'll move right. on. And and the couple that was sitting that was right next to us, who was eventually we figured out was not with the rest of the group from Ohio, was really nice. They seem, I mean, you know, so we're we're- cool. That I mean, like we were like, hey, they're hanging out here. They've been here a while. These people are probably pretty normal. Maybe we're just fucked up and misreading the situation. Right, so at one point in life, the 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 engineer lady she uh passes around a vape, like a weed vape. Weed vape. You know what I'm saying? Weed cart. Yeah, and for all of us to hit, and we're all like, "Oh, okay." And she she pushed the button and like just so that nobody dropped it in the hot. Passed it around. Yeah. yeah, and we all hit it and at this point in life this many people in this hot tub we are like literally like nine people in six and a half cups of people soup if we all stepped out it would have been like you know it would have been a few gallons of people soup in the bottom and you can't think about that in the moment and and i do have some claustrophobia issues <laughs> And it just kept getting really, really, really close in there. And they kept... Try having a dude randomly jerking off in your ear. And more people showed up, and I panicked. And was like, and I have to go, I'm hot, I have to go get in the towel, or in the, uh, in the, in the pool. I'm, And yeah, I may have run some people over trying to get out of that hot tub all of a sudden. And uh, so we go out the door for air i think is what we did and straight to our hotel room and we get there and i mean both of us are like oh my god we totally like we chickened out we were gonna what 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 was wrong with those people nothing per se they just didn't act like people we weren't used to because they were doing meth i don't think ohio and his old lady they weren't doing meth they were no i don't as we were yeah, because the lady kept, like, twisting her head kind of funny at me, and I was like, I didn't know if she wanted to fight her fuck, hun. And as I'm explaining to him what it is that this lady is doing, he's like, oh, she's birding. And I'm like, she did what? <laughs> she's birding. Or at least that's what I had heard people uh, refer to that look when somebody is high on methamphetamines when they cock their head off to the side and kind of give you the eyeballs, you know, and like they're kind of stretching their neck and, and like a bird would. And then she goes, yeah. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure they were high on meth. And, which would explain the fingers in each other's mouths thing too, which right, means cause... like I'm way too claustrophobic for anybody to put their fingers in my mouth. I don't want them on their <laughs> In my face, like, why are you doing that? Are you for, any, for anybody that's listening, we're not judging. It's just for, it was just a sh- another one of those situations that we get ourselves into that we had no fucking idea what, what we were getting into. And, you know, I mean, if meth was our scene, then, hey, cool. I'm not going to judge that you do you. I mean, whatever. You know, I mean, but that's not our, not scene. our scene. That's not our fucking scene. We have our own scenes and we have no problem with people wanting to judge us for our own scenes but meth is yeah, not fuck you 
Shut up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, like I said, I mean, like that's not our deal. That's just you know, I mean, like whatever. But it's uh, it was interesting. Then I'm then I'm panicking that we that she just like I didn't know. Could you get meth in a cart in a in a cart form like a vape cart? And then I'm like, I don't know. Maybe you can. And so then we start panicking. We're like, what if we smoked meth? Oh my god, we can't be doing this. You know, I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty epic moment. And then hence one of our dear allies. <laughs> Mr. Yes, best friend tells us that we're no longer allowed to take drugs from strangers. Yeah, we've had rules and instituted upon us no longer allowed to take drugs from strangers, which worked out really well because, like, two weekends later, I was at a truck stop and a lady out front offered me to smoke some smoke a joint with her, and I was like, "No, I'm not allowed to because I'm not allowed to take drugs from strangers." She didn't know how to take that one. She thought it was hilarious. Yeah, the lady thought it was pretty funny. But I, I didn't take drugs from strangers. I, I did do what I was supposed to do. So there is that. You didn't break the rules. She's a good girl this time. That time? That time. Yeah. So, you know, I guess in conclusion, don't be fucking awkward. Basically. Basically. But. Don't be so desperate to fit in that you jump into things that you are not into. That is. Both of those are very good points. Yep. I mean, that kind of goes into is know your limits and be an adult. Know your limits and be an adult. Yeah. <laughs> We're not very good at either of those things. As a matter of fact, nobody should take advice from either one of us. <laughs> well, if nothing else, you can at least listen to the stories go, oh, yeah, no, that was the fucking wrong way to do that shit, wasn't it? Right. Don't do that. We're going to try them all out for you guys, and then we're going to put them on here on the uh, old interwebs, and you guys can come and check them out anytime, and you'll be like, yeah, don't fucking do that. Those guys are fucking stupid. Okay, but have we gotten better? <laughs> That's the question of the day. It better be stupid? Oh, yeah, way better at it. Oh, no, I didn't mean... Oh. Be stupid smarter. <laughs> but we have gotten better. What I mean is, is like, if you take an ex take those two experiences which i would say would probably like our first like early days early days we're gonna try this we're not just lurking on the internet and hoping to somehow randomly run into a couple or we're not i mean like that was like our first real foray into the actual trying to be swingers <laughs> trying to be swingers. Shit show. Yeah, it was fuck we wrecked we crashed and burned epically both times both times but since but, then, we have gone to parties, talked to people, met them there, talked to them. Right. Like a real conversation, you know? I mean, like, you know, had fun. Then talked to them and hung out later right? another time. And went back and tried it some more since then. I mean, I've right. way better at this. I'm almost thinking, like, we should start charging for this ride. We could charge for the ride, but that's prostitution. Oh. <laughs> no, hold on. It's not prostitution as long as you film it and put it on the internet. Oh, it's not prostitution as long as you film it and put it on. No, it's art. It's art. Then it's kind of like this is this is all art anyway, and and nobody did anything illegal ever. Right. We were always in. We were always in Mexico. In compliance with all U.S. and international regulations and laws. Absolutely. Okay, well, <laughs> be a fucking adult. That's the point here. Is that first of all, you need to nut the fuck up and talk to people. And second of all, when when you are talking to people, you need to be an adult and know your limits and what you're into and what you're not into. And when you're not into some dude jerking off in your ear randomly, you probably need to just speak up and be like, hey, would you would you please not jerk off in my ear or so closely in my ear next time? I mean, like, I bet if I would have just been an adult and asked him not to jerk off in my ear, he would have probably not done it, I would hope. I would imagine so. I mean, at minimum, you and I could have switched seats. I mean, <laughs> you didn't want him jerking off from your ear either, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Hey. I don't know. The worst part was the was then when we kept looking out the window, like, 
they go yet? Can we go back to the pool? What do we do now? Right. We were all paranoid, dude. Could have been an adult. I'm sure that the drugs did not help, but I'm, t- <laughs> I'm telling you now, man, that was a fucking wreck. And 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 like and like a good eighty percent of it was all our fault, and we totally should have rescued Ohio and his and his old lady. And if you guys ever hear this podcast from the bottom of my heart, I'm really sorry that we left you there like that. Next time, we got you. And again, we're not being judgy on what you do. Sometimes it's just ain't our thing. Sometimes our thing ain't what you're into. That's cool. Comes right back to be a fucking adult. Tell people you're not into what you're not into or no, tell people it. up front that you're into what you're into yeah don't be secretive so now before we go we're gonna do one more thing we're gonna do whoa 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 hold on hold on i'm looking what? in my list here and we don't have any more things um how am i supposed to be consensual in this actions that we're about to take if i don't even know what they are well, you cannot cons- fuck it. I'm signing. I'm signing up. I'm signing up. Let's go. Okay. So one more thing. Here's what we're gonna do. What off the top of your head? What is the your favorite experience we've had so far in a lifestyle? First one that comes keeps coming to mind. I guess his favorite is the uh, impromptu like a person orgy at the at the mon. Oh yeah, that was a good one. The only regret was is that i had been up for like 30 some hours and i i kind of hit a wall at the end but outside of that that was a good fucking time that was a good time so what was yours i see now i now i feel kind of like cheesy because i was gonna go with the time that we were having that threesome with that one guy who i didn't even really like that much but like there i was on top of him and I looked over at you and we like made eye contact and I was like I love him so much and then I said I love you and I leaned over and gave you a kiss and the look on the dude's face was absolutely priceless to start with but secondly it was like I don't know it was just one of those moments that I was like okay this is this is good we can do this right so yeah yeah, I guess I feel cheesy now (laughs) I feel cheesy yeah well you know I think that comes back to this is that that's part of that whole shit that we do that is probably just awkward as fuck for other people because I don't know if other people do that kind of stuff. I don't know either, but it could be awkward as fuck. It's okay. We were awkward as fuck the first time at that orgy that you're talking about was our favorite time too because everybody oh, heard Yeah. And we were like, oh shit, I guess that's what we're going to be doing. I guess we could um, sit on this corner of the bed and... and- um, See, maybe, like, I don't know what we do. (laughs) Insert penis in orifice. All right. Any of them. Take a pick. Any of them. That's what you do at this point in life. Pick a hole, any hole. What? Well, okay. Consensual. 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 Always ask first. Do you mind if I stick this here? All right. Well, thank you very much for helping me tonight. Or, no. Thank you very much, bro. Hey, hun. I appreciate it. And thanks to all of you. I do want to remind everybody to subscribe and check out my social media for more fun and stories and polls. I have a Instagram page at May Wild West. I have a Facebook page that is May Wild West. And I have Reddit that is at May Wild West. And that's M A Y W Y L D W E S T. Also, I have a website, and that link will be in my podcast description. And don't forget that the May Wild West show is available on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. And I would really appreciate you going over and checking out my social media pages and even putting a review on one of my podcasts would be fantastic. So if you had a good time with me today, and I am always a good time. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a single riveting story, amazing episode, heart-rending confession, or just something dirty and funny. Also, don't forget to share my podcast with your other inappropriate friends. You would be my hero, and I love hearing your feedback, so feel free to message me on any of my social media. Thanks, and I'll talk to you guys later.